and I'm going to leave a few show notes to uh, the producers. Hi, it's Jana, and I am here with Esther. Is it Bloom or Blum? Blum, Blum like Plum. Okay, that's yeah. what I... Okay, perfect. I'm here yeah. with Esther Blum, and oh my gosh, check out her website and stuff, because it is phenomenal. Um, I'm just going to uh, read her in, and then we're going to get started. So three, two, one... Hello and welcome to Oh My Health, There Is Hope. I'm your host, Jana Short, and today I'm here with Esther Blum. And oh my goodness, check out her website because this lady is very busy. Esther is an integrative diet dietitian and high performance coach. She has helped thousands of women permanently lose weight, eliminate the need for medication, lose stubborn belly fat, and reverse chronic illness. Esther teaches clients to cultivate a warrior mindset when it comes to healing their relationships with food and unconditionally loving their bodies. Esther is a best-selling author of Cave Women, Don't Get Fat, Eat, Drink, and Be Gorgeous, Secrets of Gorgeous, and the Eat, Drink, and Be Gorgeous Project. Oh my gosh, Like she is incredible <laughs> and full of a ton of stuff. Thank you so much for being with us today, Esther. Thank you for having me, Jenna. I, I was really excited, I got to tell you, a little nervous <laughs> to interview you because you're like superwoman. How do you do it all? Sweet. One friend, breath at a time. That's it. Just one foot in front of the other and having a lot of structure and organization around my schedule. That's well, how I'm, I do it. I noticed that you say superstar in your shirt and I'm pretty sure <laughs> turned around, there's a cape attached. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but my, uh, my wings are in the closet over there, you know? I love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so one of the things we do here is we share stories of hope. And I know that you have lots of them. So I've asked you to pick your favorite story of hope that you want to share with everyone today. Yeah. Well, um, I have a lot. I have a lot of client experiences. I've been doing this over 26 years. But uh, so the one I'll pull today is my client, Pam. She came to me absolutely exhausted She's an entrepreneur. I actually met her in my mastermind groups. Um, and she was having a really hard time getting through the day without napping and having horrible brain fog. And you know how hard it is to be productive when you have horrible brain fog. So she, uh, I ran a complete hormone panel on her. We looked at her diet lifestyle and I did blood tests on her. And I picked up the fact that she had Hashimoto's. Her own doctor never even ran the basic blood work panel for any autoimmune issues. So, um, and I, I did her hormone tests and her, her thyroid was confirmed both in blood and saliva being very low and her adrenals were shot and she was, um, she was absolutely exhausted. But the backstory was she went through two horrible divorces. And so um, I could have loaded her up a lot of supplements which I did some supplements, but I said, you know what, if you don't fix your emotional issues, your hormones are going to continue to tank because what most people don't realize, Jana, is that hormone balance stops, starts from the top down. And so your thoughts drive a lot of how your hormones are, what your PMS is like, what your menopause is like, what your stress hormones are like. So ironically, she was an EFT practitioner. So I said, it's actually time you start practicing on yourself. It's really time you start healing yourself with your own modality. So um, she did, and she worked on her healing her trauma and her stress. And um, within two months, her energy was sky high. Her thyroid completely returned to normal functioning, even though she was on no medication whatsoever. And like she totally got her life back there. So she's just one example of the kind of people I treat who are really sick or who are just falling through the cracks medically um, that I see routinely every day. Um, and, and it's, you know, there's nothing in us that is not reversible. That's why I constantly teach to my clients is that, you know, your body is wise beyond measure and you have to just give it the right tools to heal. And that means strategic testing, uh, prescriptive diet, prescriptive supplements as needed, um, and or hormone replacement therapy. And those things alone, and also of course, taking care of your psychological pieces of your health and your stress management and not being in a place of overwhelm, not taking on more than you can do. Um, all of those pieces are what makes a person well again, but it's, it's not difficult. It can actually be really simple and straightforward and linear. 
by the way, I think that that was beautifully said. And I want to talk a little bit about those women who are out there thinking that they, they cannot feel better, right? That this is just their lot and they're exhausted because maybe they're working too much or they're raising their children. And you do not have to live in that space. There is hope for you and you can move past that at any stage of your life, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I treat people who come to me um, in their late teens, early 20s and my oldest client, 73. Um, right now. So it's never too late. You can absolutely make progress at any age. Um, you know, of course I feel bad if someone's been suffering for 20 years and then like we fix something within three months, it's like this could have been your reality long ago, but that was their path and their journey and better late than never. And it really is never too late. It, it really isn't. So, and really, you know, I focus on the big rocks. Again, I, my whole tagline is I keep nutrition and healing simple. Like I always look at the foundations because you can't out supplement a bad diet. You can't out exercise a bad diet. Um, uh, I was speaking to a colleague of mine today who is uh, a physician and she is in perimenopause or menopause. And she said, I really don't want to do hormone replacement therapy. And I said, listen, honey, no amount of yoga or acupuncture is actually going to ever raise your testosterone levels. Like there comes a point where medical intervention is necessary, therapeutic and beneficial. The research is there to support it. So, you know, as long as you're open to accept and try modalities that you maybe wouldn't have thought of before, you know, you can absolutely get better. Um, the, the mind is very powerful. You know, even drugs can be beneficial used in time and place. You know, it's antibiotics are very beneficial treating Lyme disease, for example, and necessary. And, you know, you just do what you have to do, whatever it takes, do what you have to do to get better and you will get better. Well, I'm going to shoot at you some of the questions I get asked all the time. I'm a mindset coach. This is definitely not my area of genius, but I have women coming to me all the time saying they're constantly fatigued. Like they, they're sleeping. So it's not like they're not getting sleep, but they wake up exhausted. They go through the day, like completely feeling exhausted. A little tip that worked for me was just drinking more water. Like I knew when I started getting that dive, my body was becoming dehydrated. But what are some of the tips that you could be giving to women out there who are struggling with fatigue? Well, first of all, are these women menopausal classically or perimenopausal? Well, I'm old. So <laughs> the well, women that are coming old, to me are usually because... older women for sure. Yeah. Define old for you. I'm curious what that even means. I'm 60. So... Okay. My goodness, you do not look 60 at all. Um, but I don't believe 60 is old either. But yeah, so first of all, if you're perimenopausal or menopausal, that is a time when estrogen drops and sleep apnea goes up. So people think that they're sleeping better or sleeping well, and they're waking up exhausted. So first rule out that you don't have a sleep apnea issue. You know, there are many tracking apps. There's a ring called the Oura Ring. It's O-U-R-A that you can wear. There's wearable technology that will track your sleep. So track your sleep first. Make sure you're oxygenating. Um, but aside from that, yes, hydration is key, right? Uh, because water, every molecule of water is two hydrogen and one oxygen molecule. So that is going to energize you and oxygenate your brain cells. Second is getting enough protein. Most people are really protein deficient. Uh, as a dietitian, I'm constantly reviewing clinical research articles, especially when it comes to longevity and aging and muscle. And the current research shows that protein requirements made by, you know, in research journals or research studies or made by the American Dietetic Association are woefully inadequate. And um, most of the time, a, a traditional diet recommends 60 to 80 grams of protein. That is what I put my patients on in the hospital when they were on dialysis and kidney failure, okay? So you really wanna make sure you're getting about one gram per pound of body weight. So for the average person, that works out to about four to six ounces of protein three to four times a day. Um, protein raises your serotonin and dopamine, so you get extremely good mental focus. You also get sustained energy throughout the day. Um, four to six ounces of protein will sustain your blood sugar for up to six hours after you eat it. Keeps your insulin levels consistent. Um, whereas carbs will only keep it level or keep it up at any rate for two hours after you eat it. So getting enough protein 
um, is really essential for adrenal function, good thyroid function, good energy and mental focus. So getting enough protein is one of the biggest game changers I see. Um, as I mentioned, good sleep, exercise, good stress management. If you're in front of screens all day, making sure, especially if you're a teacher right now and your screen time is really increased, you can wear blue light blocker glasses. That's another really good tip as well. So I would absolutely start there um, and see how you do. But just those two things alone can be a game changer. I love that you brought up the fact that we think we're getting a good night's sleep and maybe we're not. My daughter is a, um, she was getting her PhD. She's a doctor of natural medicine and her thesis was on using that sleep ring and having you sleep two weeks without grounding mat and two weeks with the grounding mat. But what they discovered in that four week process with her, the clients that were doing this is that they, a lot of them had a sleep disorder that they weren't even aware of. So it was very cool to get all that feedback from your four weeks sleep using that ring. Yes. And the other thing I see, which is so interesting too, is, you know, I test, um, in the hormone panel that I do, I also test neurotransmitters in the brain. And I see a lot of people who are taking Lexapro or, um, you know, Celexa or any other uh, antidepressant and their serotonin and dopamine, the neurotransmitters are still low in spite of taking these antidepressants. So they're not really effective. So I like to look at the neurotransmitters in the brain and make sure, A, you're getting the cofactors that will help you produce the neurotransmitters. So it could be uh, B-complex, it could be B12. Um, I look at your melatonin production. If that's low, um, you might need you know, just some 5-HTP or some GABA. GABA is gamma amino butyric acid. It is a very calming neurotransmitter. So you can either take straight GABA or you can take oral progesterone, you know, one to 200 milligrams at night, and that makes GABA, it ra raises your levels of GABA, so you go into much deeper sleep too. Even if you're sleeping eight hours, you might not be getting truly restorative sleep. So I always look at the nutrient deficiencies for that. And I know a lot of people will take CBD or CBD gummies, and they're like, oh, this helps my sleep. But um, you don't have a cannabinoid deficiency. Like your sleep issues are not a deficiency of cannabinoids, they're a deficiency of nutrients. So fix the nutrients first. Maybe you wanna fix your gut health too. A lot of people um, have sleep disturbances because they're either not producing neurotransmitters in their gut um, or they have blood sugar issues also. A lot of people, uh, their blood sugar drops and their cortisol goes up and ding, they wake, wake up wide awake at night. So I like to make sure you know, you're getting enough protein during the day, as I mentioned, maybe a nice dose of carbs at night to really knock you out. And that can also um, really help deepen the quality of your sleep so you have more energy during the day. You know, this made me think of a person I interviewed not too long ago who talked about gut health and what's happening to people who are outgoing and getting those um, weight loss reduction. And what's happening is now they have a different kind of absorption rate and they're having a hard time giving their body the fuel it needs to be yeah. healthy and thrive. And what happens is after a while, you start putting back on weight because you really haven't learned new habits, new eating, like new thought patterns. And now you're eating more, but you're you're storing less nutrients because your body's not able to absorb those. So have you worked with anyone in that area? Because I'm getting so many people reaching out to me saying I've had um, weight loss surgery and now my body's a mess and I can't get it back on track. Yeah. I, I've seen two people in my practice who came to me and they were so sick and ha looked so unhealthy, like really waxy looking skin and very dry hair. And um, it's, once you have changed, you know, like you say, your absorption receptor sites, it impacts everything. It impacts your ability to make neurotransmitters to absorb your nutrients properly. So somebody like that would definitely benefit from, you know, um, juicing, you know, getting some good quality veggie juice in, um, getting good quality. You, they're going to have to supplement a lot of you know, trace minerals and um, zinc and selenium and, you know, pretty much every kind of nutrient you need, omega-3s, but the, it's not only what you eat, it is what you absorb. So, um, you know, maybe gain their vitamins in a liquid or a liposomal form because that 
requires far less absorption through the gut. You know, it's, it's absorbed much more easily. Well, I'm totally going to be sending them your way because I oh. have no way. I mean, you've changed your anatomy. I have no way of knowing how that works now. Yeah, it's, it's challenging. Um, it, it's challenging. It's not a huge part of my practice, but I can certainly, certainly learn more. Yes. So I know a huge part of your practice is working with women in hormonal changes. Yeah. So um, that is really important to me because there are some women out there who, even though um, hormonal therapy is available, they can't take it. And so they're looking for other ways of, you know, thriving in like my, when I hit 50, I had a hysterectomy. And so I could not use hormonal therapy because of a blood clotting disorder, which would cause me to clot from these and throw pulmonary embolisms. Yeah. So I had to find other natural resources. And I got to tell you, that was the best decade of my life. Like, I didn't have any symptoms looking, looking for right natural things that work specifically for my body. And so what would you recommend to women who can or cannot use hormonal therapy to start making that transition? It could literally be the best time of your life for sure. Yeah. I mean, the first thing I think of is acupuncture, of course. Now, bear in mind, like, it, and everyone's different, okay? But typically, I like to, A, there's, there's so many different kinds of hormones now, um, there's so many different bioidentical options. There's, you know, there's what's called a troche, which is like a tic tac that kind of dissolves um, in your mouth. There's suppositories. There's patches. There's gels. There's creams. So there are a lot of different kinds. Okay, but if if you have a medical condition that prohibits you from doing it, then um, I would absolutely try a combination of acupuncture, herbs. And, uh, you know, uh, Eastern medicine herbs that your acupuncturist would work with, but you can also do um, certain Western herbs. There's an herb called tribulus, for example, which really raises your testosterone. There's chase tree, which can help raise your progesterone. They're much more gentle. They don't work as aggressively as hormones. Um, certainly from a lifestyle perspective, if you're looking to raise your testosterone, lifting weights with your upper body, getting plenty of uh, good quality animal protein, all of that also really, really helps um, tremendously. And estrogen, there are uh, wild yam creams that you can take that's not, that physically doesn't have any hormones in it, but mimics the effect of estrogen. So there are, there are absolute workarounds to that, yeah. I used the wild yam and I loved it. And I also um, did weightlifting because it slows down osteoporosis, which really kicks in once you hit menopause. So it works in a lot of different areas. Yes, absolutely. I want to talk about some of your amazing books. Like I love the That's titles, good. Cave Women Don't Get Fat. Yeah. Because why? <laughs> Cave Women Don't Get Fat because they eat a ton of protein and they lift heavy things and then put them back down again. And, um, you know, when you lift weights, you are building muscle. And when you build muscle, you are creating more mitochondria in your body. Mitochondria are the furnaces. That's like the disco club of your cells where, you know, fat gets burned and energy gets produced and all your ATP production happens, which is, again, part of your energy production in your body. So you feel more energized. You burn more calories at rest. You are leaner you are stronger. I always say the fountain of youth can be found in a set of dumbbells because um, lifting weights also improves your insulin reception. So there's a great study I always talk about in my talks where two groups of type two diabetics were tested and group A was given metformin, which is an oral, hypo, um, oral glycemic agent. And group B was not given metformin, but was lifting heavy weights. And the group B had far better insulin management than the metformin. So lifting weights really um, opens up your insulin receptors on the cell wall. And so insulin can just drop right in and really get to the targeted receptor site. So it improves your blood, blood sugar control and your glucose. For those of you who speak plain English, that means you can shrink your cake top or your muffin top and really get that hourglass back because when women hit menopause, we tend to turn into an apple or you know even just a soda can, like the hourglass kind of goes away and we tend to widen out. So lifting weights again will broaden your shoulders, it will shrink your waist, 
um, and it will shred body fat. And you don't have to start off lifting heavy weights. I mean, if you don't lift weights at all, no matter what you lift will feel heavy. Um, but I would encourage you not to stay. You know, the problem is a lot of people will say, oh, okay, I lift weights and they just grab a five pound weight, but they don't increase the weight. So you have to actually increase the weight every week or two as you get straight, you build up a foundation and then you start increasing your weight. So you just continue to get stronger and stronger. It should feel tiring. Most people also lift, you know, they'll say, well, I did three sets of 10 and I was down, but they didn't lift to failure. You really want to lift to failure. You um, start counting once your muscles get tired. That's how you really lift to failure. And that enables your body to really, truly have muscle growth and actually, you know, really work on those insulin receptors that are so, so important for staying lean during menopause and beyond. I love that. And that's something you really could be doing at home. You don't have to go to the gym, especially with COVID right now. You could be starting your weightlifting journey and doing yes. that at home. Um, that you kind of answered my next question. My next question is, I have so many women coming to the, me around 45 mm -hmm. on up that cannot lose that mid weight. Like it, it's just stuck <laughs> and they diet and they'll lose it in their face and their, their breast or their legs, but their stomachs just aren't going away. And they, I, I hear this all the time. When I was younger, I could eat anything I wanted and I never had a problem. Now I just can't lose this 10 pounds in my gut. Yes. So again, that is when, you know, you really want to look at cortisol management and see and, and run your morning and your metabolized cortisol because that will have a major impact. And I, I also see a lot of women going through menopause who say, think, okay, I'm gaining weight. I need to exercise harder and eat less. <clears throat> and work 10 times harder. And that actually does you a huge disservice once you hit menopause, because if your cortisol is already really high, it's going to keep it going higher and higher. So I like to bring it down. Um, so what I would recommend in those cases is actually a lot of walking and short but intense weightlifting sessions, like 20 to 30 minutes. Or you could do you know, some high intensity interval training like everyone and their mother is buying Peloton bikes right now. I do not recommend 45 to 60 minute rides. I'm like, that's fine if you want it, but do a 20 minute burst, go walk the rest, and then the other days you lift weights and walk. My goal, walking really lowers cortisol, and my goal is to get people into a more restful and recovery place and, and get off the screens at night and really embrace a lifestyle that's conducive to having really good sleep hygiene where you wind down, maybe you take a bath. I love to read at night. Um, I get off my screens by eight. I'm like really religious. I do not answer emails after 8 PM. I don't really answer the phone either. So I just like my time is my own. Then that is my calm, quiet time. And I, I can't recommend it enough for people because most people um, you know, they're not getting time to themselves is the other thing I hear from my clients is like, well, I'm with my kids till nine or 10 at night. And then that's my time is on my phone. But I'm like, well, if you go to bed earlier, you can wake up earlier and then be on your phone at five in the morning, but get your good restful, restorative sleep. You get the most restful and restorative sleep between 10 PM and 2 AM, unless you are a night shift worker. And in that case, it's between 10 AM and 2 PM. Or did I, I reverse 10 and 2, 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. or 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So that's all mm -hmm. really good advice. And you said you yeah. start from the head down when you're working with people. So that moves me right into the mindset of how things look. Because creating those boundaries, like you just said for yourself, I actually did that because my health was dependent on it, that I had scheduled those down times. Even on a busy day like today, I scheduled 20 minutes on my calendar to get up, move taking a few deep breaths and, you know, take care of myself because I always tell people, and I, you've heard this a million times on my show, but your body is very intuitive and you'll get intuition that something just isn't right. And if you ignore it, pretty soon you'll get symptoms <laughs> and you're too busy to pay attention to little symptoms, right? It's not like a massive heart attack. So you ignore it. And then pretty soon it becomes a big mess that you have to, it will bring you down and you will have to stop to take care of it. So listening to that intuitiveness is always my first go-to. 
what are some of the mental yeah. things that you can use to be really aware, setting up those beautiful boundaries for yourself and really giving yourself the self-care you need? Yeah, well, um, it's, I mean, even, you know, my business coach was like, you cannot work weekends. You cannot, you cannot sit and work weekends. I don't care what you have to do during the week. And what really was helpful for me, um, and this is relatively new for me, I'm not going to say I'm this grand expert all the time, but was blocking out. So for me, like social media, getting consistent with posting is a really weak link for me because I have a medical practice where I'm seeing people all day. And so obviously they're going to get my time and attention. So like two days a month, I had to block time out of the office to just say, I'm going to sit and write content for four hours and I delegate to my assistant and she gets it all up in Instagram and that's it. And I film videos one day a month. So it's getting more strategic in your structure. Um, absolutely knowing your non-negotiables of like, okay, my goal is to not work past 8 PM or uh, on a weekday or, um, and, and no weekend time. So that means being really, really organized, saying no to a lot of things and like blocking time out my calendar of what's going to get done where I have behind me on my wall, like my weekly schedule of like, when I'm doing outreach, when I'm seeing clients, when I'm interviewing prospective clients and like, that's my schedule. That's it. So I, I think building a schedule, even if you're not working right now, creating a schedule and a routine is, and sticking to it is really imperative because that way you're never multitasking. Your downtime is your downtime. You can shut your phone off during that downtime. You know, it's just, that's your downtime. You have nothing to do, nowhere to be, except for maybe it's running errands or go visiting a family member or cooking dinner, you know, but that's it. So it's doing less at once and like not checking your social media and all that stuff. It's just really I think when you do yourself to do less. I think when you do less at once, the way you're mm -hmm. explaining it, you actually get a lot more accomplished for sure. You do. I mean, I watch my husband, like he's so good. He'll just go and focus on one thing and do it. Right. And I would notice like I would cook dinner and then I was like, well, let me listen to a podcast and oh, let me call a friend and let me do. And all of a sudden an hour and a half is done. And I'm like, I still don't have dinner on the table. So I've had to really just strip things bare and get quiet and really focus and like, and remind myself, you know, this may be boring now, but in an hour, you can be kicking your feet up on the couch with a book, relaxing, and have all this done. So I try to remember the reward, what's waiting for me at the end, and why it's important to be focused. <laughs> well, how can people find you? Yeah. So you go to my website, estherblum.com. That's E-S-T-H-E-R-B, as a boy, B-L-U-M.com. That has links to my YouTube channel, which is getting content every week, new, new videos. Um, Instagram and Instagram stories are my most active. I have a Facebook page, Esther Blum. Um, and for, I opened up my schedule for nine people, nine seems to be the magic number, um, who can have a 30 minute metabolic blueprint call with me where we go over three customized strategies that you need to help you move the needle, whether it's with your sleep, your weight loss, your digestion. I give you, you know, I listen to your goals. We talk about your health and then we really roll up our sleeves and give you three customized strategies. So to get that, you simply go to estherblum.com forward slash call as in C-A-L-L, -L, telephone call. So estherblum.com forward slash call. And so the first nine people who want to get my schedule can get it. Wow. Ladies, I totally would take advantage of this because you do not have to not feel perfect every moment. Like you can be living the most incredible thriving lifestyle and you just have to take that first step to make the change. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us today. You are so informative. I want to have you back more and more and more. Like oh there was gosh. so much content. Thank you. Anytime, anytime, truly.